rapid conservative candidates. And then you, you, you it, it's almost as if you have uh, four or five candidates who are constantly campaigning against Romney and what many perceive to be the GOP establishment. I mean, we had the, the little the little dust up going on with Virginia and ballot access, and that was incredibly frustrating. Now you have lawsuits going on on behalf of Perry. Others are joining in. So it, it's, it's frustrating as a grassroots activist when you see candidates who embody everything that you have protested against for the past three years up in the top tier. And when you see one of those candidates, it's great that Rick Santorum is strong on social issues. That's what's driving him in Iowa. That's not going to win him a general election or the nomination. But here's the fundamental truth that's driving this entire Republican race for Mitt Romney. So long as there's a multiple number of candidates in the field, Mitt Romney divides and conquers. That is the whole issue. If it comes down to one candidate against Mitt Romney, particularly in South Carolina, one candidate could beat him. But I don't see any scenario where it's a one-on-one -on -one by South Carolina. that's what Rick Kemp Curry keeps hoping for, yeah. but it's not yeah, look, th this thing Saturday night, this debate, I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to miss the Saints game, but I'm going to come back and, and get some snippets of it. This is going to be a big deal because Gingrich is going to be smoking mad. They're going to all be facing each other. It, and it's, it's going to have some kind of determination because these people in New Hampshire are going to be watching this. It, by the way, I, I agree with you, Art. They're going to tear the bark off of Santorum yeah. when this thing that's comes in. He's not ready for what he's getting ready. And he's got to be a much better debater. See. He debates as a mean, whiny guy. And he's yeah. got to improve yeah. on that. But Gingrich well, is going to be I, smoking. I, I, if there's one thing we learned, we always talked about Mitt Romney, how he was not going to do well with social conservatives in Iowa. At the end of the day, you run the game. You do not know what's going to happen. So we can sit here and say, but will, will not happen. That's why you stay in. That's why you stay focused. And so I'm not writing Santorum off saying he can't make it happen. Well, no, not going to do it. People are writing Gingers off, you know, I mean, yeah, when he precisely. took vacation <laughs> and his staff quit. And look what happened then. When we come back, new information coming in about uh, the battle for the votes in western Iowa. Very important out there. Stay with us. CNN's coverage of the Iowa caucuses is sponsored by Cadillac and by VoteForEnergy.org, a program of the American Petroleum Institute. Log on to learn more. Go to CNNPolitics.com to get the most up-to-date news and facts from the best political team on television. Why did we build a 556-horsepower luxury car with a manual transmission? Because there are those who still believe in the power of a firm handshake. The Cadillac CTS-V. Manual or automatic, that's entirely up to you. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. I vote. I vote. I vote for American jobs. I vote. I vote for more domestic energy. Energy from all sources. To get America working again. I vote. I vote. I vote for energy security. That will come from developing, developing our, our own. own energy resources. Like oil and natural gas. Right here. Right now. Right now. I, I vote. vote. To re-energize America. With American energy. Learn more at voteforenergy.org. Closed captioning brought to you by Passages Malibu. Addiction ends here. For a limited time, Passages Malibu will be giving away free copies of the Alcoholism and Addiction Cure. To get yours, go to PassagesMalibuBook.com. CNN Tonight, a Piers Morgan special live at midnight. Piers has the last word on Iowa and the first on New Hampshire. Rick Santorum joins him live tonight, midnight. Hello? Hey, handsome. The McCann Twins for Consumer Cellular. Where are you? On the street. I got a new cell phone from Consumer Cellular. They're all the same. Not true. They're complicated, but expensive. I... Long-term contracts, cancellation fees. My plan is just $10 a month. $10 a month? I didn't have to sign a contract. I... There are no cancellation fees. Yeah, but... And I even got a free phone. And when were you going to tell me about this? Call. Log on to ConsumerCellularTV.com or visit your local Sears store for simple, no-contract plans starting at $10 per month and a free phone. Let's call and get your free phone. Consumer Cellular is the exclusive wireless provider for AARP members who get special benefits and discounts. My first call. Hello? Hey, ugly. <laughs> call 1-800-368-7824, log on to ConsumerCellularTV.com or visit your local Sears store. Live coverage of the New Hampshire primary, CNN, next Tuesday night, 7 Eastern.
right, three-fourths uh, of all the vote is in. Take a look at this. Uh, almost 75% of the precincts reporting. 79%, I should say, just changed. Almost 80%. And Mitt Romney. Romney has now taken the lead, barely 492 votes ahead of Rick Santorum. They both have 25% of the vote, uh, 24,626 for Mitt Romney. Uh, Rick Santorum, 24,134. Ron Paul coming in third so far with 79% of the precincts reporting, 21%. He's got 21,000 votes. Newt Gingrich is a distant fourth, only 13%, 13,000 votes. Uh, look at this. Rick Perry, only 10%, 10,000 votes. About 5,000 votes for Michelle Bachman, 5%. John Huntsman, 570 votes. But Mitt Romney taking a very, very slight lead. 21% of the precincts still outstanding. Let's go to Aaron and Gloria. What's going on over here? Because you're looking closely at these numbers. The Santorum was ahead. Now, slightly, slightly, Mitt Romney ahead. That's right. We've been looking uh, as it's flipped, uh, flip-flopped around at each of the leaders and why. Now, let's look at Mitt Romney and where his strength is coming from. Two key things we want to hone in on of our 19 categories. We ask people, what's the most important candidate? Quality can defeat Obama. We're going to look at that one in more detail in a moment. 31% of caucus goers told us that was the most important thing. True conservative, 25%. I'm going to tell you right now, those voters went overwhelmingly for Ron Paul. Strong moral character, a quarter of voters said that was most important, and I'll tell you right now, that went overwhelmingly for Rick Santorum. The right experience, 16%, and that is a really interesting one, also helping Romney. We're going to break those down, but best experience for a president, and this is where you see the Romney strength. 37% of caucus goers say working in government, working in business. 53% say that's the most important thing, so let's flick, flick. it over. There we Wolf are. wasn't looking for the flick. He missed I saw the it, flick. I saw it. It's it was very impressive. good. All right, okay. and this is where you see. So most people cared about this and overwhelming. Well, this has been Romney's key message. Mm -hmm. He has been saying, I'm the outsider. I've got the business experience. I know how to fix the government. You do not want an insider like, say, Newt Gingrich was, Michelle Bachman was. You need somebody, or, or Perry in government. You mm -hmm. need somebody outside of government. Santorum was a senator, is no longer. Right. So there you go. And 53% of voters say that that really was the most important was the most and that, important. And, and if, if Romney were to win tonight, that would be the key to his success. Wolf, <laughs> my wall had a little problem on the right. uh, Okay. You know but. what? I, we got new numbers. Uh, let's take <laughs> let's a look at this. Okay, we'll get it all, all of a sudden, 88%, the, number, the votes are coming in very quickly. 88% are now in. And look at this. Rick Santorum taking a slight lead. 45 votes just ahead of Mitt Romney. 26,443 to 26,398. Uh, they've been going back and forth. But Rick Santorum, a slight advantage over Mitt Romney. Very slight, about as slight as it can be. Ron Paul, third with 22,000. 728. Uh, he's got 21%. Uh, Newt Gingrich is a, still at 13%. Rick Perry, 10%. Michelle Bachman down to 5%, 1% for John Huntsman. But look at how close it is between the former, the former Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum, the former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, uh, and Ron Paul, the Texas Congressman, not all that far behind, still 12% of the precincts outstanding. But this is close, close, close. Let's take a look at the uh, headquarters of these three candidates right now. Romney headquarters, the place is full. Believe in America. Uh, they're standing, they're watching TV over there. If they're hearing me say anything, go ahead and wave to that CNN screen up there, because I'm waving at you. Uh, Mitt Romney uh, folks over there at the headquarters. Take a look at Rick Santorum headquarters, Faith Family and Freedom. They're waving over there uh, as well. Rick Santorum headquarters. They're going to wait and hear from Rick Santorum. All of these candidates will eventually speak. Ron Paul, Restore America Now. Uh, take a look at this, Ron Paul headquarters. They got balloons ready to go. Uh, he's coming in. Uh, he's running a, a, a slight third right now. But let's go back to Romney headquarters. They're waving. Uh, you know why they're waving? Because they're watching us. I'm waving at you guys uh, right now as well, uh, the, the Mitt Romney folks. Uh, this is a close race between Mitt Romney and, uh, and uh, Rick Santorum. We'll hear from them. Uh, it's interesting what's going on, uh, John. You know, it reminds me of some pretty close contests. Somebody just emailed me and says, how does it feel that I can't project, that we have seen, can't project a winner after all? It feels great because 
I love the, the finding out the old-fashioned way, but let them count the votes. What would you like for breakfast? You know, well, let's see how long it goes, but they're, they're coming in pretty quickly you right know, now. We can say this with certainty. One word that will not be used by the winner tonight is decisive. There's no one who's going to say they won a decisive Iowa victory. Look at the math right now, but you're seeing this now, Wolf. 88% of the precincts reporting. Remember, we had a lot of open spaces. Rick Santorum has filled in most of the middle. Again, to go back in time, that was Mike Huckabee country four years ago. Ron Paul, though, picking up some of these counties. If Rick Santorum comes a few votes short tonight, it'll be because of Ron Paul's strength right here. Can Ron Paul come back? You see he's in third place right now. Looks like a big leap, one of the most important areas to watch, Story County. College campus here, only 2% of the precincts reporting. So if you're a Ron Paul supporter, it's beginning to look a little difficult to win. Uh, but let's count the votes. We'll see how that happens here. As I said earlier, in a close race, you look where the votes are. Remember early on, Ron Paul was leading Polk County. Where Des Moines is, look that now. Dark red, Mitt Romney, a couple thousand votes, a little short, a thousand votes plus a little bit, a lead there. That could prove decisive. Romney came back in Des Moines and the suburbs from early in the evening. And Wolf, again, let's go back in time. 2008, this is Romney country, right out here in the western part of the state. Right now, Rick Santorum giving him a run for his money. We talked about Woodbury County earlier. This is the largest county in the western part of the state. About 60% of the precincts in. We don't know whether there are bigger precincts out or not. We'll watch as this one plays out. Now, what you have right now, the projection, the turnout. We talked about the intensity gap. The projection is we'll get about 120 to 125,000 voters tonight. 118, 119,000 four years ago. So a slight uptick for the Republicans. Is that enough to say we have high turnout, we have a big intensity gap this time? Many Democrats will say no. The Republicans will say it's an improvement. One other point I want to make, Wolf, as we watch this play out. If we have this close race tonight, right? Let's look at candidate visits, okay? Want to come out, let's close this down. Let's take away the demographics here. This is Rick Santorum. You see him everywhere. He visited all 99 counties, right? Look at him out here in the western part of the state that Mitt Romney carried four years ago, right? Now let's look at Governor Romney. He visited Iowa this cycle the least. Yes, he visited a lot four years ago. Yes, he spent $10 million. But of the candidates who visited Iowa in this cycle, it was Romney the least. Santorum tonight is going to claim doing it the old-fashioned way has helped. And if you close this down and just come back and look, we're filling in the map at 88%. Wow. Yeah. Just wow. And we're going to look at who's left. You look at these open counties, there's no votes here. Tiny counties. They could make a difference in a very close race. They could make a difference. And a lot of people are asking on Twitter, who's green? Green's a tie. If you see a green on the map, that's a tie. Again, a very small county there. But 88%, a few key places to watch this part of the state still likely to prove decisive. And you know, John, there's no doubt that Rick Santorum, Mitt Romney, and Ron Paul, they're all heading to uh, New Hampshire next week. John Huntsman's already there. The question is, Newt Gingrich, Rick Perry, Michelle Bachman, what are they going to decide based on these disappointing numbers for themselves? All three said coming into the night they're moving on. As was just discussed a short time ago, Newt Gingrich has already bought an advertisement in the New Hampshire Union Leader tomorrow. A sharp contrast, a tough contrast with Governor Romney. He's mad. He thinks the Romney pack attacked him unfairly out here. He's going to carry on at least for one more state. I talked to Governor Perry today. He's not going to New Hampshire. He's flying straight to Aiken, South Carolina in the morning. Will they reassess after tonight? Governor Perry's just barely in double digits. If he falls into single digits, everything could be reconsidered. But he says he's staying in. She says she's staying in. This is the biggest disappointment of the night. We'll have to watch whether Michelle Bachman stays in much longer. All right, John, stand by. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, but uh, you know what? These numbers are changing very, very rapidly. Uh, the official count is coming in. There's only a few precincts left out there. We're taking a closer look. Stay with us because we should have some answers fairly soon. Service. Only an outsider can find the double agent. I'll do my utmost. From the bestseller by John Le Carre. All I want from you is one code name. It will take a master spy. You're alone. You can't mention me. To catch a spy. You have to assume they're watching you. What the hell are you doing up here? Things aren't always what they seem. The Taylor Soldier Spy. Rated R. Some scholars believe it wasn't an apple, but a ruby-red, antioxidant-rich pomegranate with which Eve tempted Adam. And only Pom Wonderful 
has the juice of four whole pomegranates and is backed by modern science. Powerful then, pom wonderful now.